this is a short introductory video to help you understand the information processing system from sensation, perception, through memory. So let's get started. All organisms must take in information from their senses, organize it, and then store it so that they can later on use it. The overall purposes of these particular mechanisms, sensation, perception, and memory, are to aid in human survival and to aid ultimately in reproductive functioning. And organisms do this by ultimately trying to increase their sense of pleasure or comfort and reduce their sense of pain or discomfort, all of which serve the purposes of survival and reproduction. The first process in the information processing system is sensation. And this means nothing more than taking in information through our seven senses, sight, hearing, taste, smell, and so on. If the information isn't coming in through the senses, we have no opportunity to store or no opportunity to interpret what's going on outside of us or within our bodies and this reduces the chance of our survival. The second process in the information processing system is perception. After we've taken information through our senses, through the sense of touch, sense of hearing, sense of smell, it has to be sent off to parts of the brain for meaning making. You need to understand what that sensory information means. For instance, if we see something with fur on it, we notice slobber coming from its face, and it has four legs, the back of our brain suddenly pulls the information, dog, and we recognize what is in our environment. And that's what perception does. It organizes the incoming sensory information with previously stored information in our brains to make sense of everything around us. There are several important facts about this information processing system, and particularly sensation and perception. First, these processes of sensing and perceiving are subjective. They're different in each individual. People take in information differently, so many of them perceive colors in distinct ways, and the bottom line is, because of our vastly different experiences, we tend to interpret things very differently than other people. However, we also have so much in common with how we take in the information and organize it, we ultimately are able to have common understandings of different things. These are mammals. These are reptiles. This is a screen. Um, and these common understandings allow us to function well in society. So we stop at red lights, we go at greens. Third, sensation and perception is heavily affected by your moods, by your past experiences, by your basic needs. And what this means is that you will be experiencing different things you will be sensing and perceiving different things at different times based on if your mood is up or down. If you're hungry or thirsty, you'll be perceiving food and drink. Um, if you're feeling low, you'll tend to perceive or interpret things more negatively. And fourth, all sensation and perception tends to happen unconsciously. You're not choosing to sense, you're not choosing to perceive, the information comes in at lightning speed and you're making sense of it in a split second. The third part of the information processing system is memory. Those cognitive components of you that store the information and then retrieve it or allow you to retrieve the information when you need it. Memory. There is a more technical part of memory um, some people refer to the encoding process of taking the physical energies in. 
storing it in a certain way so that you can later on decode it. But those aren't our purposes. Memory, storage, and retrieval is what we'll be working with in this class. What is it that's stored? What is stored is information. And this is what psychologists usually mean. Uh, they say information is any type of stimulus or event that reduces the organism's uncertainty. So with the information, you know what's around you. You know that you're safe or perhaps threatened. You know that food or mates are nearby. And so information is the crucial set of inputs which comes in through our senses, is organized for our perception, and we store it because of its many benefits. The first unit of memory is what psychologists refer to as sensory memory, sensory storage, or for our psychology class, sensory registers. This is the short sensory-based memory that holds information for about a quarter of a second, and then it tends to break up very rapidly. Um, an example of this would be motion pictures, where the images come so quickly across the screen that one image and the next and the next doesn't have time to dissolve before you start to perceive motion where none, in fact, exists. This is a model that's uh, simple and uh, very helpful for understanding the memory system. The information first comes in through our senses. Sensory registers or sensory memory then takes it in for that split second. Then the next process of the memory system kicks in. And that's sometimes called attention or selective attention. The power of an organism to focus on a select input or several inputs for a period of time. When this information comes in and when we focus, we seem to immediately address what we're focusing on by reference to previously stored information in what's called long-term memory. And those long-term memories will narrow our focus or at least pull in information that we then will use in short-term memory. But let me clarify, attention or selective attention is this process where we take in anything that we're immediately mindful of. It is a process where by focusing, we're able to utilize the information for our own benefits. But what we do know is that we tend to focus on just a few inputs and we miss 99% of what's around us. Why do we pay attention as we do? We pay attention to those things which seem to address our needs. When I'm hungry, I attend to food stimuli. When I'm thirsty, I attend to drink-related stimuli. Um, sounds of soda pouring. Uh, mountain waterfalls will suddenly I'll notice because I'm thirsty. We also focus on things because those things or information is of personal interest to ourselves. My name, if I hear it, I immediately seem to attend to it even if I don't stare in the direction because I am important to me. And the third set of inputs that we tend to selectively attend to are the things in our world and our environments which are strange or novel, perhaps because they're tied to our safety needs. But the more unusual something appears, the longer I tend to attend. And this takes us finally to short-term memory. The, the seat of human consciousness, the information processor of us. And we're going to talk more tomorrow about short-term memory uh, or active working memory as it's called. Um, when we take our stored information and we use it, and then we pull more information from long-term memory. Uh, and that's our next lesson. The short-term memory system in conjunction with all of our stored information. Thank you.